And we are live, everybody. Welcome to Beacon Star Thursdays. We have special guest and Code Breaker Charlie expert, Brian P., is on the show. How you doing, Brian? Hi, Mike. I wouldn't say I'm expert, but I, I enjoy doing these. Hunt for History. You've solved a couple. He on so the show. It doing? helps if I mute this, huh? Yeah, Hunt for History was a definitely a hard one that you were part of the team. So I'd yeah, say you have a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Um, okay, so... As some of you may know, uh, the Beacon Star is written by a man called Mr. Randy Pischel. But before he was uh, Tote Putnam, before there was a Beacon Star, he had a little puzzle on the Internet called The Last Key of Solomon. Uh, that is the name of the YouTube channel, The Last Key of Solomon. And in honor of Randy's birthday, which was earlier this week, I thought we would go over it. Because I'd say, what, a year ago or so, we did a couple Zooms on it and talked about it. Well, Brian has been working on it, and I guess Brian wants to share what he has. And for anybody that doesn't know what any of this is, it's really interesting what uh, what Randy did. I think it's really cool. Um, I remember I came across it a couple of years ago. I was bored at work. I was trying to come up with ideas for puzzles, and I just happened to random, randomly come across one of these videos. And that was before the Beacon Star. And I emailed Randy and said, hey, I want to use one of your videos. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. So uh, it's kind of cool. How would you come across it, Brian? Uh, you, Mike. Oh, talking about it? Yeah. Well, um, I think it was in one of your grand adventures. Uh, at least awesome. puzzle like uh, puzzle nine 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 or video nine 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 of this, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then I didn't understand the other ones, uh, the significance of it, and then we went over it in a Zoom, and then I kind of picked up interest on it because we s solved a couple of things, and then maybe I got a couple more, but then now I'm right. I've been stuck for a long time, so. Maybe someone else will see something and can advance it a little bit further. Yeah, for sure. And maybe uh, a group of us could do a Zoom on it one night or something. Um, so first off, I want to say Super Chat's on. Thank you, Brian, for coming on. Make sure you guys thumbs up. This is just yet another ride in the Treasure Hunting Amusement Park. This ride's a little bit different because we know Randy. He doesn't advertise things. He made these videos, and he just left them out there about five years ago for people to just discover which we did. We don't even know if there's like a prize or anything at the end of this. We don't know what the message is. It's just one of those internet mysteries, internet slash YouTube mysteries. Um, I do want to mention MS in the chat. Uh, she was having her dog had some issues, right? But it sounds like all's good, Capro. And Capro's not watching uh, or listening. So yeah, good. I'm, I'm glad MS. Capro did get your email. She wanted me to make sure. Capro's in the chat there. She can't hear me. She got her headphones on. Um, Oh, she is listening. It's just delayed. And yeah, 3D Bronze, we saw your latest promo video. It's on. K-Pro says we're going to take you down with your treasure hunt. So that'll be fun once we get into that. Um, yeah, nice Packer Jack. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Uh, last key is Solomon. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the channel on YouTube and put the link in the chat in case anybody wants to check these out for themselves. And I think I heard Randy say one time this was an art project. I thought he used that term art project. And I thought, ah, oh, it's odd art project. Hmm. But Randy's just that kind of guy. I think Randy likes to do puzzles like these. And then uh, let me show it real quick. So I will share my screen. Let's see. And this is the last key of Solomon on YouTube. And as you can see, there are, oh, about 129 different videos. And that is Randy. And Randy is giving us coded messages in each one of these 129 videos. What I think is interesting is video one has 2,100 views, and then all the rest have like 30, 40, or 100. And then video nine has 6,300 views, or video 999, I should say. And it's just so hard to figure this stuff out. I think a lot of people just give up, right? Um, Oh, and our other special guest is here, and that's Mike H. of Warsaw, Indiana. Hey, Mike. Hi. Um, he's another Code Breaker Charlie expert that's on the program, so thanks for coming on. And, yeah, we're going to have some fun talking about the last key of Solomon. Um, so I'm going to let you guys take it away because I know you guys have worked on it a lot more than I have. So maybe give somebody a synopsis or what you think is going on here and maybe some of the solutions if you so choose. Sure. So okay. can you uh, show my uh, – mm -hmm. why don't we watch a video? Uh, okay. Can you show the start of video one, I guess? Maybe that's yeah, the best Yeah, give everybody an idea of how this works. Yeah, me one second. I'll make it big screen. And they are numbered. This is video one. 
get ready to go down the last Kia Solomon rabbit hole. Because here we go. One, <laughs> zero, zero, one, 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 zero. So this video is two and a half minutes long, and all two and a half minutes is is uh, Randy just giving numbers, right? That's right. So. And this first one, he just gives a bunch of zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other things I just like to point out is on the left, there's a poster of mm -hmm. uh, of a an actress, and I'm not sure how that plays into things. He's also wearing a green shirt. Mm -hmm. And there's four items on his right, uh, like a, a blue dish and maybe a pink egg and a blue egg and something that's orange. Right. Uh, so I. I would like to talk about those later, just trying to point those out right now. And these are, how our, these are how all the videos are, is him in this in this scene reading off numbers. So basically he's a POW in a prison camp is what I think, I think what he was going for. I'm not <laughs> sure. I wonder where this room was, wherever he was at. Uh, it's almost like he's held captive. What do you think, Mike? What do you think of the whole video series? Uh, I haven't watched all of them, but they are – pretty bizarre interesting huh to say the least yeah. yeah they're bizarre that would be a good word for them but there definitely is a puzzle here and randy being the logical person he is i gotta say there's got to be a solution right something that makes sense um yeah uh also I, I don't really work on the beacon star i'm kind of in a group and kind of know what they're working on but i don't participate or spend much time with it but i mm -hmm. think if if uh i think if some of this is solved that it might help for the Beacon Star because there are just yeah. uh, uh, layers upon layers of things going on in this particular one, and I think the same thing is going on in the Beacon Star. Mm -hmm. I would I would concur with that for sure. Um, okay, and as we said, uh, what is it? One hundred and twenty one. You know, no, not one. One hundred and twenty. <laughs> one hundred twenty nine. Let me make sure I got that. It's one hundred twenty eight. Plus the video 999. Plus one. Yes. So 129 separate videos. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and I just want to mention we did get a super chat. 3D Bronze. Here we go. There's a little rivalry brewing here. He says, hello, Kalazars, Brian and Mike. Oh, and K Pro. Hashtag don't sue me, bro. Hashtag audiobook. Hashtag it's on like Donkey Kong. So 3D Bronze uh, dot com slash DB uh, for DB Cooper, I should say, but slash DB for DB Cooper was here. His new treasure hunt that's out. Go check it out. Um, and if you buy in, he actually has read the thing in a video and it's audio form. So you can listen to it that way as well. And I'll put the link to his website in the chat as well. Thanks for the super chat, 3D Bronze. Me and K Pro are going to look at it. Uh, he's made some promos that contain me and K Pro. So it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so pick it back up, Brian. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can you show my sh shared screen then? Mm -hmm. There we go. The master okay. of the spreadsheet. So in all of Randy's videos, the first number that he – this uh, format took a while for me to understand what was going on. But the f first mm -hmm. number that he will read is the video number so that gotcha. we, we understand what video we're on. And then the second one is always a zero and a one. And that those zeros and ones all string together, and they will eventually say something. Form a message. Okay, binary. Okay. Correct. Yes. And then what I have here in this column F is every all the numbers that he's saying. So I, I've transcribed basically all his uh, video numbers into uh, text that we can manipulate and look at. Okay, and that took a uh, lot of time because it's a hundred. It's a lot of videos, and you got to listen to each one and make sure you don't mess it up. So that's a lot of work. There's a a lot of videos, yeah, and I have spent a lot of time. But Randy would have also had to spend a lot of time making mm -hmm. these videos. He and, can't have memorized these, so I'm wondering if in his goggles, maybe he's looking at a monitor or something. There's no way he memorized these for the videos, right? Certainly can't memorize them all. It's <laughs> right. got to be on a, a chalkboard or a, a computer. Is yeah, chalkboard. Has, yeah, there you go. That'd be a good idea. Has them coming out at him. Mm hmm. But yeah, I've, I've wondered about the setup. I'm not really sure of the setup. Uh, yes, so it is Randy about... Nomadic Madman. It is Randy the Valentine Goose. <laughs> okay. That's right. Uh, so all these beginning zeros and ones, they form the message. And that's this message up top. 
So mm -hmm. if you string all these zeros and ones together, they end up being this string here. And then if you put in the ASCII converter, mm -hmm. uh, which is binary, you get everything is clue. So this is the first, uh, one of the first things that we solved is everything is clue. And there's a lot, it, it looks like a very simple video, but there's a lot going on. Uh, and th then in his first video, he says, the first number he'll say is one because that's video one and then he'll say zero which is for this string and the rest of the numbers that he string says are these particular numbers here and this is also easy cipher to decrypt it's just ascii and it says this bit matters yes uh, this here, bit matters okay here, here in green so i think what he's trying to say is this first bit matters uh, makes sense if, if mm -hmm. you don't align it right and you put a one in front of here you'll get garbage so you have to know that mm -hmm. this first bit matters and i think he's trying to get us to understand this top line gotcha. okay so okay. in the second video he'll say two and then one and then he starts reading off all these numbers and these are uh all numbers one through nine so six eight eight and he just continues to read all the way through here mm -hmm. and and here here's what uh this is what we use to solve the code and this is what's what's in this string. So it's all the numbers zero through nine. And gotcha. because I don't have anything green here, I don't have a solution to this. I don't even know what to do with it or how to start. Hmm. Uh, to, and are they do, separated? And yeah, and I, yeah, I would have to watch the video. Are they supposed to be separated in some way or grouped? Uh, perhaps, what do you think, Mike? You got anything for this one? Uh, for this number? No, I don't have anything okay. that Brian doesn't have. Brian, okay. had, Brian had told me about this and he gave me all of his uh, transcriptions, and I wrote a tool to, to automatically do the, the the brute forcing of it. And okay. I came up with absolutely the identical to what Brian had. So mm. kind of disheartening. And because it's the second video, I can't imagine it's that difficult. You think he would gradually progress to harder ciphers, but I could be wrong. Exactly. Um, I I, yeah. I agree, but I'm I'm stuck. Same okay. thing with video three, same thing with video video four. Okay, so video five, uh, of course, he'll start with five as the first number, and then he'll read zero, and then he reads off this string of numbers. And these are all one through five. So this has led us to, yeah, it's probably Polybius, and mm -hmm. it's, a very, it's a very easy Polybius with no keyword or anything. And it's no time limit is the solution okay. to this. So I would suspect all these things will tell us about this hunt and what are the rules and and this particular one that right. we got says there's no time limit so uh, yeah and that's okay, good so it's been almost five years so he put these videos up and as far as i think we know and i don't think he's ever said but has anybody sent him a solution uh, maybe he'll make a video and and uh, mention this and tell us has anybody ever come close how many videos have been solved that he knows of hmm. <sighs> Yeah, you mentioned about the the amount of views for each video, and like 999 has a bunch of views because I think mm -hmm. someone tied to that. But a lot of the middle videos they have like eight or nine or ten views. Right. And I think I'm like I'm like all eight or nine or ten yeah. of those views. <laughs> when I came across this a couple of years ago, they'd had like zero views. I mean, I realized yeah. wow, all these channel, all these videos are on this channel, and there's just nobody knew about it because Randy doesn't advertise. Randy just lets people figure it out. For themselves which i kind of like personally um but yeah and here we are five years later but i really hope we can crack some of these it needs to be solved okay. in my opinion. so video seven uh again he's going through lots of numbers that are all below five and mm -hmm. here's the solution to that right questions answered with the question is misspelled so is that an intentional or oh, is it's it missing the N? okay yeah there's no n instead it comes out s so kind of like the beacon star where he's intentionally misspelled some things yeah potentially like the beacon star yes right questions uh, answered hmm okay so i'll just go over the ones i have and then i can show mm -hmm. the, the interesting ones so here on video 64 he he just reads a a's and m's they're all a's and m's and eventually, this is just ASCII, which the A's go to zeros and the M's go to ones. And it's the dromedary, which is like a camel. An animal, so, a dromedary. Okay. Yes. Hmm. What is and going if I, on? 
if I scroll down a little bit further, here's video 99, a bunch of K's and L's. They, all these K's and L's go basically to zeros and ones. So the K's and L's go to zeros and ones, and then those zeros and ones, you have to, it's a second secondary binary cipher. Hmm. So th all that, all this string comes out to the word no, N-O. So it, it's double encrypted. You get a bunch of zeros and ones for, from this and those zeros and ones turns out to the the letters n and o sneaky randy very sneaky okay and the only other one that we have solved is this bottom one nine, Again, nine, lots nine. of zeros and ones it's but it's very easy it, so it's so long and good luck because it's the end gotcha <laughs> yep and i see so, you have the shirt colors there right those are the red blue and green yeah so there's also shirt colors which i've done a lot for I, but i can't figure out what's going on we have so, some that are blue that are answered some that are red that are answered some that are green that are answered and it doesn't seem so to my be a thought, pattern there just looking at the way you put it in an excel format uh my thought is that these are the answers how you group them together so in other words all the reds you you put those together into some kind of a message that might be a grouping mechanism mechanism sure. uh, it, just it off top I don't know if we could solve it just for like from the different colors, but that could would definitely would be a way to group the different puzzles together once we have the answers. I, I would think we need to solve a few more before we can start yeah. doing that because I just don't right. have enough. Uh, so I'd like to talk about this column. So this column, there's a lot of two. There's only twos and nines. The, these are what I would say are the interesting ones. There's mm -hmm. twos and nines, which seem like they should go to zeros and ones, but it doesn't seem to work. Uh, there's no seven here. This is all eights and sixes. It seems like this one should go to zeros and ones, but it doesn't work. So there's something else going on. This particular one, there's a, it's only one through five. So Polybius should work, but we maybe, can't maybe find it. Maybe it needs so a keyword. Yeah. It's a keyword, but that's why I talked to Mike. And Mike brute forced every keyword in the dictionary, and we don't find anything. So it might be spiral really? or okay. or something else. Uh, uh, so this one, he reads all numbers, except sometimes, occasionally, he'll read a letter. So in this one, there's the letter A here that he reads. <laughs> okay. And in this one, here's an M. So in, in this one, there's an R. Here he's reading two-digit numbers, so the 76, 64, so on and so forth. Not sure what to do with those. And no letters in that? I, the first thing I would think of is hexadecimal, but if there's no letters, then probably not. No letters in, in okay. this particular one. Yeah, right. Here he reads digits 0 through 9, but also there's an N. Here's an O. Here's just 3 and 8s. <laughs> so These definitely clever up. ciphers um, for sure. Yes. Uh, okay. This particular one, they're in pairs. So it seems like line 47, 47th character or, or some type of book cipher that way. But And then he also reads an A at the end. And it could be that we use part of these on something else that we have to get from an earlier puzzle. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay. And, and that's kind of how he does things layer upon layer, right? Like you mentioned. So that would make sense. This particular one, he reads the number 57. But uh, if I scroll over here, it, it takes him a minute and a half to, to, to he, say 57. <laughs> he waits a long time. And then in the middle, he reads 57. And then he waits a long time, and then what? he ends it. So, wow, uh, interesting. So I have a lot. There's a, a lot of strange things that I don't understand. So mm. here he's reading some more letters in these these yellow highlighted ones. The again, this is, should be Polybius. We can't figure it out. Here's two digits, just fives and fours. Here's one where he reads an R. Uh, so ones and sixes here. So you had mentioned using previous ones. So this one, he's yeah. using everything. All these numbers are below 128. So I think it's from mm -hmm. like video 51 solution. Somehow we use that. In video 90 solution, we somehow use that. Oh, I think this one is okay. using all the previous solves, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all everything that he's reading. Uh, maybe I'll go to this next tab. Uh. So er earlier, I pointed out he... Yeah, so, so these are all the colors, and I've tried assigning different zeros and ones to those, and also looked at Morse as 
one's a dash and one's a dot and one's a space. Can't seem to find any, anything in those. Here's the four items. So in the first video, we saw the four items were like this. But mm -hmm. in the second video, he switches these the, the two of them. And mm -hmm. then in the third video, he's pu putting uh, he's switching this here and these two. So in all the these are screenshots of all the different videos. It's going to be 128. Um, are they all different? Well, he has to repeat eventually because there's oh, right. just not that many. So, uh, hmm. so he, here I'm trying to resemble those those Patterns. those first four objects, and th this is the pattern. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what to do with it, but this is what's from all the videos where the locations are of all the the things. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. On the oh, left side, we right. got the women on the wall, <laughs> right? On the left side of the screen, there was a picture of the actress, mm -hmm. and I think it's these, it's these people. Yeah. So Celebrity. videos, right. videos one through thirty-two, I think is all. It's all of this picture, and I think it's Lindsay Lohan, which I think is is a double L name. Yes. And. The second set, the 33 through 63 videos, I think is Amy Adams, which is a double A. Mm -hmm. And video 64 through 96 is always this photo, which I think is is this Mandy Moore at this event, another double M. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't even know how to, Kira Knightley. Kira. Yeah, Kira Knightley, yep. So he's her. definitely bringing our attention to double letters, it seems like. Yeah, but I don't know what to do with it. So right. maybe someone watching will have an idea what to do with these. And those are in order. So one through third, the first 32 videos have Lindsay Lohan, then the next uh, 32 or 30, 31 Correct. have Amy Adams in order. Okay. So yep. again, uh, yeah, what do we do with that? Okay. Um, hmm. uh, so here's another tab. So his arm positions. Right. He He varies his arm positions so much. And he has these wristbands on, and he's holding this mouse. So in this particular video, he has the mouse in his right hand, and he mm -hmm. has the wristband on his right hand, but not on his left. And here he's holding the mouse in the other hand. Uh, let me find... Oh, he alternates. Is there a pattern? Yeah, right. So here he has the wristband on both. And he... he he changes the wristbands in the mouse and the his hand orientation, and it's is very deliberate. He's mm -hmm. he's doing it very deliberately, uh, but also I can't find any. I don't know what to do there. Then there's mm. some uh, what what I call like actions. Like in the background, there's a bell dinging. Uh, so on video nine here at the 45 second mark, there's a bell that dings. Oh really? I never caught that. Okay. And also here in video 29, it occurs. And it happens twice here in video 33. So after and certain numbers or letters, it, it dings. Like in the middle of what he's saying? Uh, maybe that's what it is. I haven't tied it okay. to what character it, it occurs at, but it, that might be is what's happening. Mm, and there's like a different bell. It's like a double bing. It's a different sound. But it's, it's occurring at, at these times in these videos. And... He twists his wrists very deliberately at this time on these videos. Uh, yeah, maybe I just found one there. And then he itches his chin sometimes at, at these times. <laughs> Man, Red, Brian has done a deep dive on this. Okay. So when he says everything is everything is clue, I think he's right. talking about all this. Uh, but what got me looking at all these different things was his looking left and looking right. So it, at these specific times, he deliberately looks all the way to the left or all the way to the right, very deliberately. And sometimes he shakes his no, head no, sometimes he looks down, sometimes he looks mm -hmm. up. So then he leans sometimes, and I don't know if he's just twitching. Is it just mannerisms or is it intentional? Right. Yeah. 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 So it start, <laughs> there starts to be a rabbit hole. And he plays with his armrest sometimes. And it seems deliberate to me, but I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> okay. And here's where he ha has a left. If he has a left hand bracelet, I'm trying to mark that. 
That's a lot to go through. I mean, we it, it, on a first visual of the videos, the first time you listen, you think it's just the, the code that he's saying, and then you realize there's everything going, there's a lot of things going on in those videos that are also right. could be encoded messages too. Uh, okay, so I think that's enough sharing of my Excel sheet. Yeah, th this was what you showed. This is his YouTube site. Last Key of Solomon, which there's a whole bunch of internet stuff about Solomon and the last key. And yeah, don't yeah, know if that know. Relates, or he just picked a cool name and a cool picture, right? Yeah, I don't know how all this relates up top here, mm -hmm. if it does or if it do doesn't exactly. Uh, so I shared all this with Mike, uh, Mike H, who's here. Mm -hmm. and he put this website together. So I'd like to share this website. So if you could send this to the chat. On this website, uh, which yes, Mike put together, he, he's very good with all this. Everything is uh, transcribed in text here. So this would be like video one and what he says, and this is video two and video three and video four. And this will be for all the videos all the way to 999. So if you click run, uh, it takes some time to think and – is going through all the uh, the calculations that Mike has. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th this is what it found. So this is the bits, the, the beginning of uh, the beginning zero or one. So it's, it it found that everything is clue using ASCII. Okay. And here is the mouse if it's in its left hand or his right hand. And oh, it, interesting. Okay. It, it, it's trying to use a bacon, but it, it doesn't it doesn't quite make sense. So I, I think this isn't uh this isn't ciphering correctly, but this is what is being tried to decipher it. And left hand <laughs> mm -hmm. bracelet and video one. So here's everything that he says. And in, in this particular case, I found this it de decoded this bit matters, which we already had, and it's using the ASCII. And the score is is it tries to take the letters and uh, calculate uh, how much English is involved with that scores, or it, it looks at all these letters and tries to put a score to the English behind it, which doesn't always work, but it's a good indicator. So okay. here in video five, it likes the Polybius no time limit, which we already have. Uh, so, so this is a lot of what was in my excel but if anyone goes to this link they can get all the the they can first of all they can run it and and look at things and they would, can also get the text of what each video has and what the what randy says in those videos and that's the hardest part is just trying to transcribe it all first so that's great that you guys have, have done the work and are sharing it with the community as well um sure this thing needs a, a large following behind it. This should be one of the, you know, Reddit uh, internet puzzles that a thousand people are trying to solve together, I think. And that might be what it takes to solve it. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, any code breaker Charlie's definitely reach out. Maybe we could get a group of us together to kind of uh, solve it, uh, work on it together, I should say. And again, we don't know if there's a prize. We don't know. We have no idea. We just have to figure it out. I think maybe Randy should add a prize to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Five years later, it hasn't been solved. If he was so inclined, it'd be nice if he would add something that if somebody does solve the whole thing. But my my hunch is that it says what it is. But it'll tell us, yeah, once we solve some things. Gotcha. We're not even good enough to know what it what what the prize is. <laughs> and if you guys remember, uh, with the Beacon Star, we didn't know what the prize was either when that first book came out, and he put out a puzzle to explain what the prize was. And he may have done the same thing here. It may be incorporated in one of these videos as a puzzle uh, to show what the prize is, if anything. Um, I really like it, though. I mean, for a code breaker, Charlie, this is kind of top of the list. It's definitely hard. I get it. A lot of people look at it and they just their eyes glaze over and they're done because they don't get it. But I, I really admire it. it you, can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine, Mike, what it took Randy to, to storyboard this thing and, and just plan out the whole thing and then to make these videos? You make charge. You make uh, puzzles. Yeah, um, it, it, it's insane. 128 of them is insane. Well, right. One thing that that's interesting about it is that there there are common uh, solutions. So he didn't do 128 different things, and that's mm -hmm. why if you if you solve one, it's actually pretty helpful. Solving one is probably like solving five uh, because okay. once you know how to solve one of them, you can add it to that program and it'll 
check all 129 of them and say, oh, actually, four other are solved this way as well. So, like, that, that program actually does, like, we don't have very much actually implemented. Uh, we don't even have Caesar shift in there right now at this point. I just implemented the things that Brian had known to work. And I'm mm-hmm. saying, I just like, let me double check to see if you missed anything. And no, he didn't miss anything. It even goes so far as to uh, try like things in a sequence. <laughs> so like it finds that uh, the one that transcribed to no eventually uh, deciphered to no. So it'll mm-hmm. like try two things. It'll try two different cipher ciphers in a combination. And so if we find any more, and so, so like the problem is, is that like that, that actually grows exponentially whenever you start adding new crazy things to try. Like you can't just Mm -hmm. try everything and then try that on top of everything else. Like that gets insane. So I'm trying to. Programmatically, right? Right. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to limit it to things that we know have a decent shot at working and then try the more common ciphers, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So like if anyone comes up with one, if we have reason to believe that something like a simple Caesar shift, and I probably should just implement this honestly, but if, if we have reason to believe that a simple Caesar shift is is going to decode one of those or it's going to decode it after you do an ASCII or after you do the Polybius, then we can have that that tool go a little bit harder in those directions. But you you kind of have to uh, you have to pick and choose how much effort you want to put into it. Otherwise, you'll have your computer go for days yeah. turning away. And you'll get so many results back that you won't even know which ones are, are real. You'll take forever shift uh sifting through how so, long did it take you to write the program mike uh not too long i, th- I think i did it in like an hour or two but and i Brian. i've already i already got pretty good at building these kinds of programs because uh okay. this is this is this is ultimately how we crack hunt for history those programs like like these gotcha. where okay someone would have an idea on what we needed to do because bart had made it he, he telegraphed pretty nicely like roughly what's the what's the, the 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 cipher but he always put a twist on it and we'd have like multiple different ideas on what could the twist be we mm-hmm. try all those and then we we try variations of different source texts and like maybe it's this sign maybe it's that sign maybe it's a different sign and then you'd end up with thousands of possibilities and then brian was really good at just sifting shift sifting through those to find the one that actually came out to really good english and, 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 and the days of pen and paper, I mean, when you have something like this with 129 yeah. videos or whatever it is, I mean, you, you really need a program to help you out. It's, right? Yeah, it's just way too much. And and it's way too much to do by hand, especially when, like, they're not just simple, obviously. Like, okay. there's there's there's, there's going to be, a, I think, a lot of different little twists and turns. And, like, something else we didn't implement is is someone asked in the chat if we had tried the, the other version of Polybius where I don't remember – one of them is you go like column then row, and the mm. the other version is row then column. You we'll know? reverse it. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't tried mm-hmm. that uh, because we didn't know if that was a thing. Usually, people don't mix those up, but I think in this one he probably did. I watched a right. video for the Beacon Star uh, where he was saying like that's something that interests him is mm-hmm. he's doing the different versions and it might not be the standard version, which made me think, Oh man, I should revisit that in the Solomon thing because this is, he has a lot of opportunity to, to, to twist things up in in these puzzles. So I'm fairly certain that, yeah, probably some, some of these are probably the (laughs) the other version of it where you go row then column. And some of them might be a spiral. I, some of them might be, you start at the, the, the bottom left and work your way, up to the top are you the bottom right and work your way up to the top left i don't know but it's just like well, you could you could implement all of those but it starts to slow things down so you, you have to you have to pick and choose so brian how many hours would you say you have in on this uh so if you add up the time for all the videos it's uh, mm-hmm. 191 minutes so it's <laughs> just to watch them the first time just <laughs> just to watch them so then, right. uh, yeah, yeah, after you just transcribe it, he reads a lot of numbers. And you, if mm-hmm. you don't transcribe it right, you have to check again. And then, then right. I start getting into action. So I've watched all the videos several times. I don't want to know how <laughs> much time I spent. But I enjoy right. it. It's, it's fun. Uh, it's yeah. just lately there's been no, uh, no aha moment. We haven't figured anything out. So it's a little frustrating. Right. 
Well, you never know. Randy may just come out with a clue or a hint. You know, it's, it's, I think he, when the biggest star first came out, he was, you don't give hints, you don't give clues. But I think maybe he's warmed up to the idea a little bit because he has I think given us. warned on him. I, th- I think we yeah. need you to kick him. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I hear you. Now, if, if anybody who's watching, you know, Treasure Hunting Amusement Park has a bunch of rides. And if you're like, this one is just not for me. Uh, I just want to remind you guys, Copper Dan's got a treasure hunt. He says, or if you want a real treasure hunt, check out the Trolls Cash. It's not fake like that DB Cooper hunt. So there's a little rivalry going. <laughs> and then we've got another one from Copper Dan. Uh, the Trolls Cash laughs in the face of Mike's supercomputer. <laughs> I guess he's saying uh, maybe because his hunt, I don't know if you're familiar with it, Mike, but his hunt does have some ciphers in it, like maybe three or four. And uh, yeah, so maybe they're ones that can't be solved by a computer. Uh, so yeah, those are two other rides, two other treasure hunts. Uh, DB Cooper, 3D Bronze, uh, DB Cooper, and the Trolls, Copper Dan's the Troll Cash, and that's Copper Dan. Uh, I'll put the link to his right here, copperdan.com slash troll. But this one intrigues me. This one's been out there for almost five years, and I'm sure some other people have made a little progress here and there. But um, just the sheer, sheer amount of time that it must have made that Randy must have put into this to to put it up there, and then I wonder if it makes him happy to see somebody actually working on it or not. Or uh, you know, he just I don't know how you put it out there and then just never talk about it. Now, yeah, Mary, I I he, Mary, what's that? I would assume he would want to know if someone's working on it and right. What's what's causing a hiccup for them but maybe and he mary, yeah and mary thank you for emailing me mary points out that on the youtube channel let me share my screen real quick uh again last key is solomon on youtube if you go to the about he has a uh, solomon voyanich on twitter so he does give a twitter account and if you go to that twitter account now he doesn't post on it often like september He's put some of the videos on this Twitter account that he's given for the Beacon Star. But I wonder if we go through all this, if he's, is he dropped anything for, you know, the uh, videos here for The Last Key of Solomon. But Solomon Voynich on Twitter, if anybody wants to do a deep dive uh, into that, basically, and try and figure out what's going on. Maybe that way. Maybe he's given us something. Maybe not. Um, and then there's also a playlist called the Hudson Brothers from 1974. I've never heard of the Hudson Brothers, but he has that on here as a playlist. Don't know if that's a clue or if it's just something he enjoyed watching when he was a kid, maybe. Uh, but Randy, uh, happy birthday. We hope you're watching. Um, I know we changed our times, and I haven't really seen him in the chat. Maybe he's getting ready for work. Who knows? Uh, but definitely interesting stuff. If we could get a bunch, maybe 10 Codebreaker Charlies together, on, you know, maybe once a week or on a, t- a time schedule. I think maybe we could crack a couple things. Um, so if anybody's interested in doing that, uh, make sure you email me, cowlasers at gmail.com. And uh, never know. All it'll take is one little aha moment, and then maybe a couple of the other ones will, will crumble as well, and we can build on that to try and solve this thing. Is Randy trying to tell us he solved the Voynich manuscript? Actually, the Voynich manuscript got solved, I thought, recently. You guys familiar with that one? Uh, the Voynich manuscript. Uh, it's a book from like the 1600s or something. And it had like a code in it and somebody out there actually solved it. I believe uh, somebody can Google that and find out. Yeah. Randy is probably laughing at us right now. That's true. Um, <laughs> only one cipher left in the trolls cache for my supercomputer. Uh, <laughs> that's <pretty> funny. <laughs> Ah, so there's a Solomon of Voynich on Reddit and a Sol- Solomon uh, Voynich on Facebook. Interesting. Uh, Randy is on YouTube under uh, Valentine Goose, if you want to check his uh, videos out. But, yeah, um, it's just one. I think the hardest part is what you already figured out, and that is the first number that he gives is the number of the video. The second one is a zero or one to form that message. So. Mm-hmm. Because none of it, none of the string will make sense if you're not excluding the first two. So that's kind of the first step, I think, in figuring these out, uh, which is yep. helpful. You've definitely done all the work, Brian and Mike. And now it becomes just actually solving them. Um, but what would it be? I mean, if you have a, ele- a puzzle with an element of four different things, meaning what he has on the shelf, what kind of puzzles come to mind when there's four different orders of uh, things? Anything pop in your head or no? I mean, if one's a side, it's not going to be Morse code because if one is a separator, you still got three other different elements. You only need two for Morse code, right? And plus, there's always four, so that's not going to make sense anyway. Um, four different orders, 
four different elements in random order. Not random order. There's definitely a pattern, but what could he be trying to convey there? Uh, well, four four objects in a random order. There's 24 possibilities. How you can okay. rearrange those, which is incredibly close to 26. Is so. You, yeah, so it's like, 24, 24 times. 24 possibilities. Yeah, so like I haven't check this at all but one idea would be something like uh, just assign that to a random letter to start and then do like a cryptogram solve on it and maybe okay, Mike. maybe you'll find that like each arrangement is a, is assigned to the exact same letter mike can you share my mm -hmm. screen yeah calling mm -hmm. so uh, yeah mike h kind of there we uh, go I guess this is basically what I tried. So I, I assigned this particular order to the letter A. There's four quant there's a quantity of four, four times that happens. These are the videos. Then I assigned this particular pattern to a B, uh, so on and uh. so forth. So yeah, he uses all 24 and th this is the quantity for each type of an arrangement. Uh, as far as doing it as a cryptogram, I don't think I went that step. So like this particular one, yeah, I didn't. So this particular one would be an N, I guess, is what you're saying. Uh, now, how do you get an N? I'm trying to understand a cryptogram. How would that work? Uh, uh, I, I just assigned it an N because. Oh, I, I see. Uh, so video one is here in this particular mm -hmm. order. And so there's only two of those. And I. So here's my different A, B, or C, or... So if each video represents one letter, correct? Each order represents a letter. Yes. So I just okay. chose that this was H. Uh, and in video 70 and these, uh, it has this That's pattern. So that would be the H part. Yeah. So like the, the cryptogram idea, like there, there, there might be a way to like, there might be a way to actually figure out like how the letters are assigned. But like the idea would be that like, if you look at whatever that one, Brian, uh, he's, I think he's got P assigned to it. That's a pretty frequent one, right? So like in the English language, that's, that could be an E. That's probably sure. an E. So in other words, letter frequency analysis. It, yeah, exactly. that's what you're saying. So, yeah, so yeah. that would be like that's one, one idea to, to look at it is letter frequency mm -hmm. analysis to say the P is probably actually an E. The rare, two of them aren't used. So that could be like a Q and a Z probably aren't in there yep. and then any of them that are really rare could be an x um and then yeah you would just try letters until something try to assign letters until it makes sense <laughs> this one's for you mike did you name your supercomputer joshua hashtag shall we play a game hashtag one of the best movies war games <laughs> the whopper <clears throat> um yeah, this one seems like we should be able to figure it out. I mean, I'm not saying it's not difficult. Obviously, it's difficult, but there's only four elements in different patterns. It seems like we got to at least key in on the right idea eventually. Um, oh, hmm. yeah. So here I'm concatenating that. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure I put it in the a cryptogram solver. Mm -hmm. This would be the letter string of the whole, all the videos together. How many like different letters? How many different letters are there out of the alphabet? Does he use all twenty-six for the different patterns? There's only twenty-four possibilities. 20, so, it only oh, goes, so it only goes to Y. So he, he's using all twenty-four okay. possibilities how that he can. Get to y? Uh, what did I skip? Yeah. Uh, F. Hmm. It looks like I'm skipping J for some reason. Was that because I, J, like Polybius, same? I don't know. Maybe. It's just random. I just randomly chose. Right, you're just random. I understand. Yep. Hmm. At the time, I'm sure there's a reason. Now I can't understand why I did that that way. <laughs> and this is definitely oh, one of those puzzles you work on, and then you put it away yeah. for a while, and you come back to it. Yeah. Here's basically all the uh, – so this first one is basically an N, Yes. And the second one is basically a P. So th this is all of those strung together. Mike N says 24-letter Greek alphabet, maybe? 
Uh, I appreciate all your ideas. I'll I'll watch this again and read the chat. I don't have it up right. right now, but I appreciate all the ideas. I'll take a look at all of them. Thanks. Hex code RGB. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely was seeing the, the idea of a, of a hex code with RGB. I, I never made any sense of it, but the RGB definitely stood out to me. And it's definitely intentional knowing Randy. Yeah, that's right, Zozo, sure. for sure. Sure. It's definitely that's decipherable. We just got a key on that one thing that we're like, ah, and then you get that aha moment of that's what he was doing. Um, like, like something else I might look into with this is what are the odds that if you were if it, if it were random, what are the odds that you'd end up with? How many times did he use that one? One, two, three, four, five, six, ten? seven, eight, nine, or ten times? Yeah. I mean, that's something I can compute. I haven't, but like that might not be something that happens randomly. If you have that many possibilities, 24 possibilities over what, 128 or 129 videos, it might be very unlikely for that to show up, which would tell you that it does in fact matter, which I mean, I, I think we should assume it does. But it would be a real hint to, to, to motivate you because that's like one of my biggest uh, things I struggle with is motivation. Like if, if, I, were, <laughs> if I were super motivated, <laughs> I, I, could, I could really put some effort in and, and, and probably solve something. But and, it's just not clear that this is even a thing that does solve. Who knows? I, I, I has, would he put in a red herring like that to drive us crazy? I mean, maybe. And if he wanted to get really sneaky, didn't you say sometimes the mouse is in the right hand, the left hand? Could that be the way you read it, left to right or right to left? Those four <laughs> items on the shelf? I mean, there's a lot of what ifs. Good I would idea. hope each element is separate, but I guess they could be combined in some way. Like we were saying, the, the shirt, those messages are read, to, are grouped together. Um, hmm. It, it seems, on the surface, it seems such a simple video but there's all kinds of variables right and that's the genius of it really sure, i mean i sure. thought i can't remember if i'm making this up or actually heard him talk about he got the idea from the pow prisoners in vietnam that would blink morse code when they were actually put in front of a camera trying to send a message back home and i thought he said or maybe i'm totally making this up that he had that idea because you see he's kind of sitting there it looks like a pow setting that basement that he's in where he's trying to give messages in a certain way I don't know if he actually said that or not. I can't remember. I thought he did, but I'm not sure. I mean, that's a great um, point is like, I haven't figured out how I haven't watched all the videos, like I said. So I don't know mm -hmm. if there's anything in his cadence or not that would like help you with Morse code, but Morse code has to be in here somewhere. The, the, right. the, this is, it's too similar to the POW Morse code thing for him mm -hmm. to not use it once. So if it's not in the way he's saying this, which I don't know if, if, if Brian has that transcribed in a format that like people <laughs> can see, you know, at this point. Uh, but if, if it's not in there, I don't, I, I don't know how you would, I mean, actually one thing I could think of is all of those things that are, uh, that look like they might be ASCII that, that they're one or two, like where we were saying, maybe they're zeros and, and ones, maybe they're not zeros and ones, maybe they're longs and shorts. We had, um, we had, we had done A's and B's for bacon, but I haven't once considered Morse code. Hmm. 3D so Bron says, uh, 3D Bron says, I'm assuming you've all watched Randy's videos called Memories, nothing more than Memories. 10 minute mark, he addresses some of this. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of that I remember him saying. Maybe he talks about it then. So on the Valentine Goose channel, Memories, nothing more than Memories. Um, Steve M is saying, Are you going to share this anywhere, Brian, the Excel spreadsheet? If anybody wants to check it out, uh, that's your choice, of course. Um, sure, I can. Uh, if you're interested, uh, Mike, can they email you and then I? Yeah, email I, me, guys. Kylelasers at gmail dot com, and I'll kind of put a list together of everybody who's interested in working on it. Maybe we could just share it with certain with yeah. those people, and we do a Zoom, and you know, maybe talk about it. But Morse code, right? That's a good one. I mean, that's just a basic, you know. But how is he implementing it? Is the trick. Um, and you know, when we did these Zooms, was this over a year ago now, Brian? I thought we thought we had. I thought we had solved the different items on the shelf. I must not be remembering correctly because you would have remembered, right? Yeah, we didn't solve the different items. We didn't. Yeah, I thought we had some good ideas, but maybe it must not be. Um, or maybe it was the pictures. I mean, no, what I'm thinking of is the double letters. That's what I'm thinking of. That each of the picture of the, of the celebrities is the double letters type thing. Uh, maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking that was realized. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely interesting. I definitely intrigued by it. Um, 
I know it's not for everybody. It's definitely a code breaker, Charlie, uh, treasure hunt, but those are valid just like all the rest. And wouldn't it be crazy if there was a huge prize behind this and nobody's known for, for five years. <laughs> I mean, it's just, nobody's really cracked it, like uh, attempted it like Brian and Mike have. And maybe there's somebody out there that really has put all the time into it. And if we could put everybody together, who knows what we could find out. <laughs> K pro says for the record, she does not need a copy of the spreadsheet, but she enjoyed <laughs> listening to you guys. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And I think people that are new to codes and ciphers, this it maybe is a little more advanced, but it's just the format that he's doing it in, I think is really uh, uh, novel and I like it. Uh, Copper Dan says, Mike, great job with the 12 days hunt. That was fun. Yeah, it, uh, it was a lot of fun, Mike. Uh, we had a lot of fun working on it. And I only got pulled in on the last couple, but uh, it was it was uh, a good time for sure. Thank you. You are a whiz with the software stuff for sure. <clears throat> he is. It was yeah. a good hunt. It was, yeah. We look forward to the next one. Are we gonna have to wait till Christmas the next year, or you don't know? Uh, I, <laughs> I have. I, I started trying to think about like what could I do next year. I've got no ideas. I'm, I'm right. going a complete blank. I have, with. I don't know what to do. And gotcha. so, like, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's because I'm on on the Christmas one. I'm uh, pigeonholed into Christmas or not. But I have an idea for something I think would be a lot of fun that has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. Uh, so, and, and it's actually blocking me. Like it's, it's an idea I, I keep <laughs> going back to. I'm like, no, I can't do that for Christmas. That won't work for Christmas. But what am I going to do for Christmas? I'm like, yeah, but I got this really good idea that won't work for Christmas. I think I might have to just do it uh, like in the middle of summer or something, get it out of the way so that I can start thinking about the, the Christmas one. But I don't okay. know. It's obviously a long, long ways away for the Christmas one. But I, I mean, at this point, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm struggling to come up with novel ideas. But I also was doing that last time too. Uh, It'll come to you. You just sometimes you got to take a break, right? And then something will pop in your head, and you're like, "Huh, that would be a good puzzle." Yeah, it's all about the ending for me. Uh, right. I can, I can come up with puzzles for the ten or twelve days. It's about how can I come up with an ending that most people have a reasonable shot at solving even if they're not going to be the first, something that they're not going to look at and say, oh my gosh, I would have never, ever in a million years ever gotten that. And it, it's pretty tough to, to come up with an ending that stumps people for a, a while with, while also being reasonable. <laughs> this is a really tough balance. But yeah, I think I think maybe, maybe during um, summer sometime, maybe around 4th of July-ish, I, I might have one. Okay. And I mean, we've definitely got this to work on in the meantime. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one. Uh, we'll see if Randy makes a video addressing it or not. And I definitely want to watch the memories video because I don't remember that um, for sure. Yeah, I think I watched it, but uh, I should probably watch it again. Thanks, 3D. Right, right. I haven't seen it. I'm and Kathy says, it. I don't want to wait till Christmas. You can do a different one. That would be great. <laughs> so people really liked it. And uh, I think you'll get a lot of interest on the next one, Mike. Um, it's awesome. I'm, so, I'm curious yeah. if people felt like, not to hijack this, but if people had like suggestions or comments, I, I would mm -hmm. love to hear them. Like, you can find my right. email. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's right, uh, Brian. I just remembered you. You two had hunt for history, but Brian also had the uh, was it Master Mophius? <laughs> Remember that one, Brian, with the poem for Spencer. Sure. That sure. was a good one. I was I was right behind you on that one. Not right behind you, but I had I was really working on that one. That one was a cool one. I wish he would do another one, but I think you. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> I think you. Uh, he's like I didn't think there was any way anybody could get it this soon, and Brian solved it. <laughs> so that was a good one. So okay, there it is, guys. Uh, we're already at an hour. I'll see how quickly that goes by. Uh, the last Kia Solomon on YouTube. Here is the link if anybody wants to watch the videos for themselves. Right there it is. Happy birthday to Randy Pischel. We hear a storm went through his town. He lost power. So we hope you're doing all right, Randy. Um, if you want to make a video and address all this hard work that Mike and Brian have done, we would look forward to that about the last Kia Solomon. And there's also the Beacon Star, guys. Uh, down here in the description is a link to Amazon. You can get the Beacon Star for only $7. That's a treasure hunt in Denver. It's a code breaker, Charlie. Not as difficult, or maybe I should say just different than this one. This one's very difficult because you have to write everything down. Brian's already done the hard work for you. 
and now it just becomes trying to solve it. Uh, uh, okay, sorry, I was just reading the chat. Um, so there it is. Maybe we could get a group together to work on this. Um, anybody that's interested in Brian's spreadsheet, email me, kylelasers at gmail.com. I'll compile a list. Uh, Mike, you're putting your uh, that program out there for people. I put the link in the chat for people to use, correct? Yep. And that has every video, transcribed every video. Um, anybody out there wants to go back and double check Brian's work, make sure he didn't miss anything. <laughs> Maybe that's why we can't solve some of these. Yeah, but you sure. never know. Sure. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, you guys got any uh, final words or anything else you want to bring up? We don't have to end the show, but. Uh... I don't have anything. Thanks for Randy for a uh, challenging hunt, but we need a little nudge. Yeah, a little hint would be nice because um, it's just codes upon codes upon codes, it seems like. Mike? Yeah, I, I just hope uh, somebody who is super interested in this stuff uh, has gotten interested in this particular hunt mm. and can can share some ideas like there's a lot i haven't tried um and maybe i should just try them but someone solving something that we don't have would certainly help me uh get drawn back into this it's just something that's been on <laughs> right. my back burner there's so much stuff going on that i look at it and i say uh maybe there's some stuff you could do on it but like it's just not at the top of my uh top of my to-do list I, I would love to have some progress on this to, to put it back on the top of my to-do list for sure and i want to thank randy uh for putting it together as well um yeah so i've already got people emailing me saying hey i want to be part of a zoom let's do it so it's just so many things happening that we could just dissect it start tearing it apart even more so than you guys have already done um so okay there it is randy happy birthday we hope you're doing all right so, guys, Treasure Hunt Amusement Park is rocking. We've got The Last Key of Solomon. We've got The Beacon Star. We've got Copper Dan's Troll Cash. We've got 3D Bronzes. Uh, D.B. Cooper was here. And coming out very soon, guys, we have K-Pro and Kalazar's newest grand adventure. So look for details on that. We spent some time getting it finished up, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um I won't say, eh, maybe it's a code breaker, Charlie, but you guys know how we do things. So I think you guys, there's something in it for everybody. So we invite everybody to try it out. And uh, we'll give you all the details on when it comes out, what the prizes are, and how it's going to work. But, uh, yeah, Steve M says, I'm not a code breaker, Charlie, but a strategic thinker willing to take a look. And, you know, that might be what it takes is somebody that's yeah. not into codes to look at it a different way, right? Sure. Um, just an mm -hmm. idea. and. We just tell Mike H the idea, and then he programs it into a supercomputer. It takes him like five minutes to program it, and he can try out a million different possibilities. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah, we just need a strategic thinker. thinker. Exactly. Somebody to think of something a little bit different. Because so I can see Randy going, this is the traditional cipher, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit to make it harder to recognize something, right? Yeah, and he Along does it 128 lines. times, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, and how many times do you think he messed up and had to do the video over? I mean, Randy, if you make a video, just to, how long did it take you to design this? And how long did it take you to make 128 videos and not, you know, and how many times you have to redo it? I mean, that's a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I've thought about that before. Yep. Yeah. A lot of work went into the planning all this. And then I also mention uh, Johnny's Treasure Sweat. Johnny's Treasure Quest. Say that 10 times fast. Uh, Jim King says, hey, I opened all 10 of my tins from JTQ. I got a 1965 quarter, 90% silver. I also got the S, I, L, E, and R tiles for silver. The V tile is a hard one to get. So for anybody who doesn't know, there was a jeweler in Michigan called Johnny, and he created his own treasure hunts using his jewelry. He was going to go bankrupt or sell it all, and he decided, you know what? I'm going to use the jewelry as part of treasure hunts, and it's called Johnny's Treasure Quest. If you put that in, you'll find his website. And what he's doing now is he's selling these tins for $10 each. They have Scrabble tiles in them randomly. If you spell certain words, you win prizes. Ten of these tins have a silver X, and whoever's lucky enough to get the silver X is entered into a $100,000 treasure hunt that will be done next year. So – me and K-Pro have some of those tins, and we're actually going to use them as prizes in our newest Grand Adventure coming out real soon. So if you don't want to buy your own, uh, check out our hunt. Maybe you can win some uh, that way. So I just wanted to put that out there. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and I look forward to doing a Zoom where maybe we could discuss this a little bit further uh, with some other people. Sounds All right. Thanks, thanks for Mike. tuning in, everybody. Happy birthday, Randy. We'll see you guys Monday. Forest Fan Treasure Found. See ya.